I want USC to be boring in 2024. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Hulkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube or wherever you want to download your podcast, this show is always free, and this show is always going to appreciate your support. Ultimate College Football Head Coach is a brand new mobile game that is completely free, has no ads, and 100% playable offline. Use the promo code Locked On. CFB, all capitals, inside the game store to receive a free boost to your program. Begin your coaching legacy today. Boring football, I'm here to tell you, boring football is good. It's great, right? Boring football wins football games. And boring will win you national championships. I know this because Georgia plays boring football. Michigan played boring football last year, and they're still fun to watch because they're winning games and they're winning national championships. They score points. They make plays on both sides of the ball. Michigan was one of the top scoring offenses last year. Didn't know if you know that. It's true. They had one of the top defenses in the country. It's true. And both programs that I've just been talking about, Georgia specifically, they develop NFL draft picks. So what's wrong with any of that? What's wrong with boring? I ask you. I'm not suggesting that Lincoln Riley, you know, fall in love with the whole three yards and a cloud of dust mentality. I'm not asking him to turn into Woody Hayes or Bo Schembechler or nothing like that. But, you know, playing around on the side, using the run game to set up Miller Moss, instead of, you know, using the pass to set up the run, that's not going to get frowned upon at a place like USC. I promise you. Guarantee it. But the, the Trojans, their football program, they have a reputation that they need to maintain. It's been tarnished a little bit lately. Winning is always first and foremost. Absolutely. No question about it. But USC, the Trojans, they need to start producing on the ground. If Woody Marks knows about the greatness of USC running backs, you talked about him, then he probably also knows that, you know, Ronald Jones was the last USC Trojan to rush for 1,000 yards. What was that, 2017? I know Travis Dye came close. Close doesn't count. Following... Tuesday's practice, my everyday listeners and viewers of Locked on USC, uh, you heard what Woody Marks had to say. I'll repeat it for those of you who might have missed yesterday's episode. This offense is bound to have running back success. The school is bound to have running back success. I think he he's referring to Brian Jackson. Made a great choice coming to USC. The place speaks for itself when it comes to running backs. Some great, phenomenal running backs have come through here. But I don't care who does it. I really don't. It could be Woody. It could be Quentin Joyner. It could be Amarian Peterson. It could be USC's newest horse, Brian Jackson. But a thousand yard rusher in a season, that's not boring. Never has been. USC just needs an offense just boring enough to produce a thousand yard rusher. Okay. The other thing that Georgia um, kind of does, what Stanford used to do, um, used to do all the time, they blended their, well, Georgia now, they blend their running game with their really super athletic tight ends. Yeah. And they just physically dominate and they frustrate their opponents. I know that might sound like boring football running the ball, throwing it to your tight ends. But you know what? It's not. Throwing a 10 to 12-yard slant pattern or a post pattern, those intermediate range passes to, you know, Lake McCree, Kate Eldridge, Joey Olson, Walker Lyons, Walter Matthews, that won't be boring. 
it'll probably be successful because no one will be anticipating it. I mean, how bored were you back in 2022 when you saw Lake McCreek hurtling the, the Notre Dame defender along USC sideline when USC beat the Domers? That wasn't boring. No luck. Trust me. I'm not willing to, to cut off my nose to spite my face. <laughs> not going to do that. Because when you've got Zachariah Branch and Deuce Robinson and Makai Lemon and, and Jacoby Lane, when you guys when you have those guys lining up on the outside as much as possible, you want to get the ball in their hands as frequently as possible. And you want to get the ball in Zachariah's hands. as well, If you do it every play, you would, but pragmatically you can't. So again, USC won't be boring. But, you know, I think I would love them to be less hat, more cattle on offense, so to speak. And, def and defensively, geez, I want USC's defense to be as boring. And please don't take this the wrong way. I want them to be as boring as UCLA's defense was in 2023. Yeah. You, the Bruins had such a boring defense. That their run defense was just what the second best in the country last year. UCLA, and I, what they had a top ten overall defense in the country. Nothing flashing, just solid. They were aggressive. They were disruptive. You know, boring enough on defense to stop USC's offense last year. Once again. I'm not asking Lincoln Riley to change his stripes. He is an offensive genius. What I am asking, what I'm requesting, be a little bit more, and again, finger quotes, boring. Incorporate that run game. You've been stacking tight ends, back-to-back -back classes now. Let's use them. Let's unleash that beast. I think that will be a winning combination. And we know it'll help the defense because ball control, it might sound boring, but when it results in a touchdown, mission accomplished. You're going to get scoring drives that take a couple minutes. That's just because USC has so much firepower, so much explosive play capability, it's going to happen. You know, you're going to hand the ball off. Someone's going to bust one for 50, 60, 70 yards. You know, you're going to put the ball in Zachariah's hands out there, maybe on a flanker screen. He's going to get a great block. He's going to have one guy to beat. Boom. Traveler's getting ready to come out the tunnel. That's going to happen. But at the core, base, you know what? How many times did you hear me mention Miller Moss's name? Once. Miller Moss can still be a star. He'll still put up the stats. But, you know, Miller Moss playing, directing USC's offense like Andrew Luck used to, you know, direct Stanford's offense. Now, Andrew Luck was probably a little bit better of an athlete than Miller. But Miller can, you know, he can pick him up and put him down. He can use his legs. I've seen him do it. There you go. USC needs to be boring. Go back to playing boring football. Starting with a 1,000-yard rusher. Let's get a tight end that has 500, 600 yards at the end of the season receiving. The fans will love it. They'll appreciate it. And I have a, I have a feeling the results will prove it. You'll find your, the team will find itself probably in the postseason, maybe the playoffs. We'll see. We will see. Hey, so we had practice, USC had practice again on Wednesday. And got to talk to some of the defensive players. Got some of their quotes. Stick around. Good stuff. Coming up next. It's summertime, which means it's barbecue season. Stock up on all of your grilling favorites. You can earn cash back on every purchase when you use Ibotta. Now you won't have to choose between hamburgers or hot dogs. You can actually get both. Ibotta is a free app that lets you earn cash back every time you shop. And the average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of that entire shopping trip. Probably buy a lot of hot dogs, a lot of, a lot of burgers, definitely. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you earn cash back that you can withdraw to your bank account. 
PayPal, or put it on a gift card. Simply add the offers in the app, upload your receipt, and voila, money is yours. And did you know you can save on over 2,400 different brands, and you can shop at over 1,000 different retailers, including your favorite grocery stores? It's time you joined over 50 million users who use Ibotta and start earning cash back every time you shop. Right now, Ibotta is offering Locked On USC listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code Locked On College when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code Locked On College. That's I B like boy O T T A in the Google Play or App Store and use code Locked On College. College football is back, and it's not too late to catch up before the season kicks off. SEC, ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, doesn't matter. You get it all from the Locked On Stables of College Football Experts by subscribing to the Locked On College Football Podcast, who has a chance to make the playoff. What teams will cause chaos in their new conferences? Everything you know all in one place. Be sure to follow and subscribe to the Locked On College Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every day. I mentioned it before we came out, you know, going to the break. Wednesday um, was the last practice of the week for the media. That's the last one we're going to see until next week. So you're watching this episode of Locked on USC. First thing, Thursday. Well, the team is practicing today. The media won't be there. Uh, We'll talk to Coach Riley on a Zoom call in the morning. Now, I'm not sure if they're practicing in the morning or the afternoon. I'm assuming in the afternoon, since this week, everything's been in the afternoon in front of the media. Uh, It was another short viewing session. So we are definitely at the point now of practice, uh, fall camp, (laughs) whatever. Uh, Or Coach Riley, he's he's gone into the cone of silence mode, at least as far as what the media gets to see. I mean, check this out. When we were led over to linebacker land, that's what I call it, the linebackers, they were hanging out with the with the secondary on Brian Kennedy's on Brian Kennedy practice field. If you know the layout, um, it's over here, <laughs> and we're going over there. Essentially, um, we didn't get to see Matt Entz and his guys up close and personal like we typically do. And that's when we, you know, get a lot of technical um, te- technical points of view from Coach Entz when he's coaching up his guy. So we didn't get to see that. What we did see is off in the distance a little bit, the defensive line going through their stuff. Uh, basically, you know, three-point stance, pushing the sled, shedding the sled, and then running after and tackling the rolling, uh, rolling donut or wrapping up the, the tackling dummy. Today, it was a hot day. Wednesday's practice, really warm. Um, They're out there in full pads, full uniform again, so that was cool. They actually had a lot of pep in their step, considering how warm it was. And, again, offense, they were wearing Cardinal. The defense, they were wearing white. Scout team defense, they were also wearing white. With that said, because it's a neutral site game, even if you're playing on scout team, which usually means you're not playing that week, I think everybody gets to travel. So I will tell you this. Braylon Shelby is not on the scout team. (laughs) Um, There's something else I'll tell you. I cannot remember a USC player, second-year player, uh, who looks like an NFL prospect right now. I mean, literally. If you didn't know that he played for USC, you'd say, whoa, he's a rookie or is he a second-year player in the NFL? Dude is just yoked. It's, he's got that look is what I'm trying to convey to everybody right now. Um, he looks like Wooly Batiku. Remember him? He's the first player that comes to mind when you just go, whoa, physical specimen, USC Trojan. The difference is when you watch Braylon Shelby move at his size and when you watch Wole move at his size, Braylon looks like a football player. He's got some fluidity in his hips. Wooly just looks so mechanical, so robotical. And I'm glad he had a really good final season over there in Illinois, but 
It just never happened at USC. Moving forward. Uh, there was a really funny moment during practice, during the skitch and stretch uh, portion of the uh, of practice. I was hanging out there with Scott Schrader and Anthony Jones Jr., the running backs coach, came over. And uh, he, he goes, hey, Scott, I got a point of contention regarding running back Quentin Joyner. The coach said, you know, Q isn't right about anything, but he's a really good football player. And the, the context behind this, yesterday um, when we were interviewing the players on offense, uh, Scott was talking to Quentin about barbecue in Texas. And Joyner offered his opinion about it. Coach Jones is from Memphis, Tennessee. So he's not a Texas barbecue fan. He's a Memphis-style barbecue fan. So he wanted to make sure Scott understood that Memphis has the best barbecue, not Texas. You guys argue about it. <laughs> I know everybody has their favorites. Um, Makai Lemon, he ditched the white shoes. He was wearing black shoes today. First time that I've noticed. So we'll see uh, if it was just, just a one-day thing. Again, I won't know until I go back out to practice next week. So until further notice. Uh, the NFL sent the Green Bay Packers, the LA Chargers. Each team had at least one representative there checking out practice. Hey, did you guys know this? I had no idea. I learned something new today. You know those um, jugs, jugs machines? They launch footballs, you know, for, to simulate a punt or a kickoff. I always thought those were single load things. You know, one football at a time, put it in, boom, it goes. No. I'm watching Eddie uh, Chaplisky. He was doing some maintenance on, on the machine. And that thing is actually like a missile loader. You could put six footballs in there one time. I had no idea. Maybe that's just a high-end model. Anyways. I found that interesting. I thought maybe you guys might find that interesting. Uh, Doug Belk, secondary coach, Danton Lynn, defensive coordinator. Before they headed on over to Brian Kennedy uh, to get the drills going, I, I watched them having a discussion. I was looking forward to talking to uh, Coach Lynn after practice, but he ended up ditching the media for some reason. He probably had a, an obligation he had to attend to. Something came up. We found out that we'll be talking to him uh, for 10 minutes prior to talking to Coach Riley on Zoom. So no big deal. But uh, I wanted to ask him about, you know, playing eight to 10 defensive backs per game because that's what Coach Bell talked about the other day. So I wanted to get Coach Lynn's uh, take on that matter. I asked John Humphrey, cornerback transfer from UCLA, uh, about what he thought about it. And he says, hey, you know, that's the coaches. The, let, they have to figure that out. Now, John did give a really good answer. I asked him about, you know, what's the biggest, what's been the biggest adjustment for him coming over from UCLA? And, quote, the competition is so much better at USC. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad, right? I wonder if that makes the bulletin board if that makes bulletin board material over there in Westwood. If somebody heard it, I'm sure it's going to. Because my next question uh, was actually about the rivalry. You know, I've talked about it on the show. It, it kind of feels like the USC-UCLA rivalry is kind of taking a back seat compared to the USC-Notre Dame rivalry. And I asked him, I go, you know, how are you going to approach that game this year? Because, you know, you played on the other side of the fence. Just, you know, we'll, we'll see when that comes. I don't think he really understood. And it, it's always my fault if a player doesn't understand the question. I didn't convey it correctly. Um, you know, the way I asked him about, you know, has the rivalry taken a backseat? Well, he only knows it from the UCLA perspective. So, maybe again, not a good question. My fault, John. I apologize. Uh, let's see. What else did we see on practice? Oh, no, that was John Humphrey. Really good answer when we spoke to him. We also spoke to Achille Arnold, Jalen Smith. Dude looks really comfortable right now. Uh, Eric Gentry, John, I spoke about, uh, I just mentioned John Humphrey. Kamari Ramsey, Nate Clifton. Uh, I was in the scrums with Achille and Jalen and Eric. And I also got in there with, uh, well, you know about John Humphrey, obviously. So, Eric Gentry, always a good interview. He's 
he's he's either running hot or cold though. He's either fun, easygoing, or he's really direct to the point, and he'll leave you with some really interesting answers that's going to make you raise your eyebrow. Whoa, did he just say that? Uh, today he was the latter, by far, not even close. There was nothing fun and easygoing about Eric after practice today. Uh, he was asked, what's the biggest thing he's learned this fall camp compared to previous years? Both of my eyebrows went up when he said this. How to play football. I want to let that sink in for a second. I'm going to say it again. His first initial response, how to play football. And he continued. I would say the biggest thing is not just to overthink or worry about doing your assignment. Instead, just make the play. I think it was more other stuff in the past than playing football. So I think it's way more straightforward this year. I feel it's an NFL style. That's the biggest thing. Somewhere in Madison, Wisconsin, Alex Grinch just got a chill up his spine. His ears were burning. Yeah, he probably started sneezing. And then as far as communication is concerned with Eric, Let's just say uh, Gentry is extremely happy that he can talk with the coaches this year. It's not what he said. It's it's how he said it. I encourage you, when you're done watching this episode of Locked on USC, I've got the video up over there on the wearesc.com YouTube account. Go check it out. It's free. Um, today's answers from, from Eric I think they really, really underscore just how dysfunctional USC's locker room was last year. Again, he was so candid. And one one last note with about Eric uh, about with practice. I've mentioned in the past how he's he seems like he's always the last guy to walk through Gugay to tap in right in time for practice. For instance, today scheduled for two fifty five. He's giving me my knuckle hello at 2.54, and then he's tapping in, walking through Google. I'm fine with that. You know why? He's also one of the last guys to leave. For the second day in a row, I noticed him, um, him and Anthony Beavers Jr. They were getting their steps in, just putting in some extra, running some wind sprints. Eric was doing that before he started answering questions. Maybe that contributed to him, maybe not being his ever best himself. But uh, yeah, he was he was pretty dialed in with his answers. Fascinating stuff today. I think Zachariah Branch was probably the last player off the practice field. Uh, he was working by himself way off in the distance, receiving punts over and over and over again. I guess the best way for me to compare it, picture, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant, Picture Kobe Bryant staying after practice, just shooting free throws, shooting three-pointers, working on his craft, you know, dog work type of stuff. Uh, what I did get to see in practice, again, not a lot. I, talk, I told you about the defensive line, what they were doing. The offensive line got to focus on them for a couple minutes. Um, they were working first in two-man group pairs, and then in three-man groups. They were working on dry blocking, pulling, Coach Henson, he was really emphasizing hand placement, uh, getting leverage, literally, you know, drive the guy off the line, get the defender off his feet, lift him, launch him, you know, send him to the moon. You could just, you could feel the energy, even though it was, you know, 60, 70 yards away. And again, much of what we saw over there on Brian Kennedy with the defensive backs and the linebackers, uh, just a lot of footwork, a lot of lateral movement, keeping the shoulders and the hips square. So it was time to break and pursuit for the tackle. You're not going to get feet to the inside or the outside. You're always going to be in, you always be in the right position to attack. That's what they were focusing on. At the end of practice, really cool moment. Uh, the spirit of Troy and the song girls, they were doing a little mini concert for the team um, as well. You know, getting ready for salute to Troy that's coming up, that celebration. The media is not allowed to attend that, by the way. Oh, they're also doing the uh, SoCal spell out a little fast, but they're getting closer to having the right cadence, getting closer. And then the coup de gras, the best way to end practice, 
the band left, the Spirit of Troy, they went marching out. And who do you see? Yeah. <laughs> Jacoby Lane, he's got the symbols. He's in the band now. He found his second calling. So when he's not catching passes from Miller Moss or Jaden Mayava, you'll find Jacoby Lane doing percussions with the Spirit of Troy. All right. Hey, have you heard? Pete Carroll's coming back to USC. Stick around. We're going to talk about that next. Hey, Locked On USC fans, I want to take a moment to give you a heads up on a brand new mobile game that I think you're going to love. Ultimate College Football Head Coach. In this amazing game and simulation, you get to step into the shoes of a head coach and lead your college football program to glory. Can you imagine actually being the head coach of the Trojans? Yeah. From recruiting players and hiring a coaching staff to overseeing training camps and handing out scholarships. You control every crucial detail of your program. It's all in your hands. Will you be able to handle the pressure? And here's what I really love about the game. You're responsible for calling the opposite plays during the games. Your strategy will not only determine the success of the football season, but will shape the future and legacy of your program. Ultimate College Football Head Coach is completely free, has no ads, and is 100% playable offline. You can play on the go as you want and when you want to. And of course, we have a special offer for Locked On USC fans. Use promo code Locked On CFB, all capitals, Locked On CFB, inside the game store to receive a free boost to your program. Make sure to take advantage of this perk as it will get your team off to a strong start. To download the game, just visit the ultimate the ultimate dash cfb.com. Again, ultimate dash cfb.com or look it up in the app stores. Ultimate college football head coach, begin your coaching legacy today. Speaking of football coaching legacies, uh, yeah, Pete Carroll, he's coming back to USC. He's turning 73. That'll happen September 15th. Hey, for all of my Locked on USC listeners, he should know it, my birthday is September 9th. So me and Pete were like that. Virgos unite. So six days after Pete turned 73, I turn 57. Anyways, he's returning to USC in the spring, and he's going to be teaching. <laughs> Professor Pete Carroll. He's going to teach a class in the spring 2025. There weren't any specifics, uh, but he did a radio, uh, a radio interview, and he said that, uh, yeah, he was asked if he would be, if he's still interested in coaching as well, and he said, I could coach tomorrow. But that's not something he's desiring at this point. Okay. Coach speak. But having Pete back on campus in any capacity, any capacity, that's good for USC. It's great. Period. End of story. Forward slash end thread, right? I, I've talked about this before. Make him an ambassador. Give him an office at the McKay Center, inside Heritage Hall. I don't care where. So when recruits come on campus, you know what? Bring him by Professor Carroll's office. Bring him by his classroom. Right now, I see Coach Riley. He's playing chess. It truly is. Remember when he said, when it, when it comes to building his team going forward, everything was going to be done with a defensive mind first. First and foremost, defense comes above everything else. Well, I think we just have a, he Carroll's pretty good with defense. Remember, so you now you have Danton Lynn. He's your defensive coordinator. You have Eric Henderson and Sean Nua developing the defensive line. You got Matt Entz. Coaching the linebackers, defensive coordinator. You got Doug Belk and Taylor Mays coaching the secondary. And now you bring in the dean of the school of defense. Perfect title. Professor Carroll, the dean of the defense. I think the only thing I'm mildly concerned about, and I'm sure they've already worked it out. Hopefully, Taylor, Taylor Mays, Coach Taylor Mays, and Pete, they've worked out their differences. For those of you who might not be aware, Taylor was really disappointed that Coach Carroll did not draft him when he was when he came out of USC. Yeah, there was some there were some feelings involved. We'll just leave it there. 
And that reminds me, speaking of Taylor Mays, I since he's been promoted to, to assistant coach, I wonder if he's going to be, uh, be available for interviews in the future. And did you know USC also has a full-time special teams coordinator? Ryan Doherty no longer uh, carries the consultant analyst tag. Full team special teams. Full-time special teams coordinator. So here's the thing. Just in case there's an emergency where USC wins the national championship and Coach Riley bolts to the NFL, not happening. Just saying, in case an emergency happens, USC is hoisting that trophy. Jerry Jones comes calling. said, Lincoln, I got all the money you need. USC, I'll buy it out. USC can break the glass. They can bring Pete down, let him be the head coach, be the bridge to the next head coach. Since he hasn't closed the door, according to Coach Pete, Professor Pete. So what do you think about that? Let me know. Hit me up in the comments section. Look. We don't even know what he's doing. He's coming back. He'll probably be teaching a course one time a week. And it's, you know, how to sell snow to an Eskimo. It'll, it'll have something to do with community relations, something along, something along the consulting lines. I guarantee it'll be somewhere within there. I'll be back with another episode of Locked on USC tomorrow. I have some notes, some quotes from our conversation with Lincoln Riley, Dant Lynn, and anything else that comes up. There's recruiting that's coming up. We'll see if maybe we got some news and notes of what's happened with Nick Brooks. Tune in tomorrow for another episode of Locked On USC, your place for all of your USC notes and information. And then when you're done making Locked On USC your first listen, get on over there at WeRC.com. I got a lot of written content. Eric McKinney, Chris Arledge, Scott Schrader, we got you covered. So until that next episode of Locked On USC, everyone, you know what to do.